Joining us to talk about the possible link between sexual abuse and Amber Heard's testimony, Sarah Klein, a civil and trial attorney and one of Larry Nassar's survivors, a huge domestic uh, violence advocate, Sarah. Thank you, number one, for all of that. But number two, good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Absolutely. Let's dive right into Amber Heard because one of the important things, and you and I have kind of corresponded about this, is talk to us about the reality if Amber Heard is a victim or, on the other hand, if she has made up this version of facts and she's not a victim of domestic violence. There is so much to say here. We could literally spend an hour just on that question, but I'll start by saying I don't know what the truth is here, right? I'm not in the jury box. I'm not getting the evidence that they're getting. But I do believe survivors. And what is clear in this case is that someone got abused, and quite potentially both parties got abused, right? And, and now in my practice, I exclusively represent survivors. I am a survivor, as you mentioned. And the one thing that I see all of the time and that we're seeing play out in this case is that people make assumptions. They make a lot of assumptions about another person based on what they think they know about them, right? Um, they're a pillar of our community. They're the star gymnastics Olympic doctor. They're the pinnacle of Hollywood. They wouldn't hurt a fly. And they would therefore never abuse someone. And so what we see is this credibility of the victim being automatically discounted and the credibility of the potential perpetrator of the godlike figure in the case be automatically inflated and one of the common things I hear and what we're hearing in this case especially is well what's in it for her right they she just must want fame or money or attention and ironically enough that is exactly what started this case because that is the exact thing that Anne Amber Heard's op-ed was about, which was it's difficult, especially for women, to come forward with accusations against someone in a position of power, power or charisma or star, you know, power, um, and that they must be lying. So whether the viewer here is, is, is deciding, making up their mind that she's lying or telling the truth, one thing I know for sure is that what she wrote about it being difficult for women to come forward with accusations against powerful men is true and you know regardless of what we think this was a toxic relationship someone was abused and this case in my view is doing a tremendous injustice to abuse survivors and i can definitely talk more about what that looks like if you'd like i do want you to but i just want to go back to one of the things you said that is so important i saw this as in my work i've seen it as a judge on the bench and that is disbelief that a certain person can be a victim, disbelief that a certain person, to your point, can be a perpetrator. And I think for me, one of the most important takeaways is anybody can be a perpetrator, anybody can be a victim, and you better not ever assume exactly what you said, that someone can't be one of those things. But now, yes, Sarah, I'd like for you to delve a little more into that and tell us how you mean. Yeah, and one thing I'll just add to what you said is when I give speeches across the country on this topic, I say when you walk into your kid's school, ask yourself the question, who's the most popular teacher here? Who's the most popular coach? Who's the one that has the, the most access to your child that is beloved? And that's the one as a parent I advise people to keep your eye on because it often is that good guy predator, the one with the most charm, the most charisma, who is the, the pinnacle of the community, the one we all believe would never hurt a fly, who is indeed hurting children, adults, whoever. Um, so I'm a glass half full person when it comes to the effect that, that this is going to have on survivors. So I'm going to start with the bad news. Um, sur just generally speaking, survivors are always 
watching. We are always listening. We are watching this stuff play out. We are in the room and we are watching how people respond and whether they are there for us um, or not. And, and what I think this case is doing is showing that there is this tremendous skepticism when it comes to especially women who allege abuse. And this is not news to me as a, as a survivor or as a sexual abuse attorney, but statistically we know that one in four women or one in six men have been sexually abused in their lifetime. And arguably, I think that's low um, based on the fact that we know survivors don't report because of what we're seeing play out in this exact circus. Um, there are a lot of reasons people don't report. Um, but what they're seeing with this trial in particular is, at, is that the cost of coming forward is sky high that you will be shamed, um, re-traumatized. There is this dynamic of discounting credibility and the effects are irreparable of considering discourage, discouraging victims or past victims of abuse coming forward with accusations in the future. All right, so one out of four women, one out of six men, really important to emphasize. Again, it can be anybody, really short question. Listening to yeah. this evidence, do you have any um, thoughts on who the jury's going to believe at the end of the day? You know, I, I have watched cover court TV coverage, gavel to gavel, all day, every day, hanging on this testimony. And as a trial lawyer myself, I have absolutely no idea where this is going to go. But I will say, I hope the jury gets it right, whatever that outcome may be, because survivors are watching. All right, Sarah Klein, you know I adore you and appreciate so much all of your advocacy. Thank you on behalf of all victims. Now, as we prepare to resume trial on Monday,